God's word read and proclaimed, and to return to God our own prayers and our praises. And welcome to those who are joining us online. We truly trust that God will bless us all as we've gathered. Um, to our, our ones joining us online, I invite you at this time to maybe go find some juice and bread, whatever you would like to, to use for communion later. Um, and if you would like this too, we still have some of those uh, ones that are self-contained little uh, communion kits. If you would like those, let us know and we'll get them uh, to you. <clears throat> so, the, um, the only thing, again, I'm just going to keep reminding you is that we're using uh, a different version of the Lord's Prayer, so you'll need, if you have not memorized it, which I'm sure most of you take it home and memorize it by now, that's the assignment then, huh? <laughs> need to be that is printed there in your order of service. Um, please take time to look at the announcements that are printed there, um, where you are involved and can be involved. We continue to always need uh, uh, it, that we still be, we always are in need of folks to, to assist you on Sunday morning. Uh, all the way, we, we sure enjoy coffee, uh, serve coffee, to read, to communion, to usher. Uh, there's uh, several options and they're out there on that table. So I encourage you to, to take your time and, and sign up. And you can always share things, uh, responsibilities as well. That is all the announcements I have. Are there any then from members of our congregation? Yeah, great. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're looking for another team of a couple folks that would be on a rotation. I think it's every three weeks. Hopefully four. Every four weeks. A, a couple of folks we need to come, you know, together to, to mow and trim. Uh, we have we have the big mower out here. You don't need to bring your own. And we even have a push one out here. And, of course, the weed whacker or whatever we call them. So we need a, a, two more people who are willing to team up and be on that four-week rotation. Again, you know, we're not, we're honoring the no mow in May, so um, our pollinators can uh, start their, their season off in a good way. So. Good. Pastor, um, I wondered if maybe you want to announce about Jenny's funeral on Saturday. Thank you. Yeah, um, our sister Jenny, uh, which passed away a few weeks back, uh, her funeral is this Saturday morning. Hope that you will uh, support, continue to support, support Ari and his brothers and family in this loss that they have incurred. So, thank you. Let us now prepare our hearts for worship. <laughs>
I invite you to stand if you're able as we begin with our gathering hymn. And together we pray, O God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated and continue with the reading of the word. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 6 through 14. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it's not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 68, which we'll read responsibly, is, will be verses 1 through 10 and 32 through 35. Let God arise and let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As smoke, smoke is driven, is driven away, away, so you, you should drive, drive them away. away. As, As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God. Sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am as that they rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are father to orphans and defender of widows. You give, you give solitary a solitary home and bring, and bring forth, forth prisoners into freedom, into freedom. but the but rebels, rebels shall live in desert, desert places. places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a bountiful rain, O oh God. You restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O oh God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O oh kingdoms of heaven. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in the heavens, O oh God. In the ancient heavens, you send forth your voice, your mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy places. O God of Israel, giving strength and power to your people, blessed be God. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 4, 12 through 14, and chapter 5, 6 through 11. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert, like a roaring lion, your adversary. The devil prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of sufferings. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I invite the uh, children to, to join me at the back door here. We're going outside. so You all just have to listen in, OK? Let's go. Let's go. Come on, if you want to come, come on. Come on, this, can you? Here we go. Okay. So how are you this morning? Hey, do you like the sunshine? So I want to ask you, when you look around, have you noticed anything different that has happened since the sun has come out and it's so warm? Have you, what, what have you noticed? Animals have come out. What? The sides of the roads are getting teared apart. What else? There's flowers on the trees. Have you noticed, like, 
all the leaves that have come out on the trees that didn't have leaves all winter when there was snow? No more snow, yeah. And maybe you have flowers growing in your, at home in pots or in the ground, yeah? Now here's the big question. Why do you think all of this has happened? God, okay, yes, God has made all this happen, but why do you think God has made all this happen, Emory? Because it's spring? Why else do you think God has made all this and warmed up the air? Any idea? Or maybe here's a better question. Who did God do all of this for? For all of you. Because what do you get to do now? You get to play outside. You, get, you have flowers. You get to be outside with your pets. And you get to enjoy. And maybe you've gone on some walks in the woods. Or you're going to get to go camping. All of this wonderful new stuff that's come back this year, all of that, God has done for you. You know that? God has done all of this for you because God knows you like to be outside and you like to play. Okay, so we got to thank God for that. So let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are ever grateful for the warm sunshine. We're grateful for the trees that are blooming, the flowers that are blooming, the leaves on the trees, and the grass that is growing. Thank you that you have made all of this happen so that we can be outside playing. Thank you for your beautiful creation. Keep these girls safe in all that they do as they enjoy the last days of school. Just watch over them, and may they have a joyful time in your creation. In your precious name we pray, and everybody says, Amen. Amen. Hey, do you want, want something to color? Here you go. Here's, here. Scrap this scrap. Okay. Okay, let's head back in, okay? Oh, ooh, that's a cool beetle. He's on his back, though. Okay, let's head back in. Keep going. Keep going, Emery. Keep going. I invite you to stand as you're able as we continue with our gospel acclamation. Holly, holly, holly. chapter of the gospel according to St. John. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They are yours, and you gave them to me. 
and you gave them to me. And put it on my spot. For the words you gave to me, I've given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am on, your, uh, on their behalf, I ask. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have, given glor I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Beloved of God, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Something about myself when I'm getting instructions from somebody or somebody is trying to explain something to me, I will ask questions, I will repeat what they've said, I will say, so now is this what you mean? Is this what you want me to do? And so on. And sometimes I see frustration on the faces of people. When I'm asking this, it's kind of like, hey, dummy, didn't you get it the first time? And I didn't. But I want to be able to know what it is we're talking about. So they'll say something, and I will say, so what do you mean? Or so on. To where I hope by the end of that conversation, I know what I'm supposed to do, or I know what we're supposed to do as a group if we're in a meeting. This past week, I called our insurance company about our homeowner's insurance because someone had told me I needed to call and find out some more stuff. And God bless Karen on the other end of that line because she was talking to me, and, and you know, Mike can just tell us all about this, what loss assessment means. And I said, what are you talking about? And she went around and around telling me, and I said, is this what you're saying? No, 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 no. And she was Googling it, and she was doing everything possible so that I could understand that. Because that has something to do when you live in an HOA, some of that kind of stuff. And finally, God bless Karen. She was patient for probably 20 minutes or more. And I finally got it. I got it, what it means. So if you want to know, just ask me. And, <laughs> and I could make a good decision based on what she said. But I had to get all of the details. In the 16th chapter of John's Gospel that precedes today's reading, Jesus has been talking to the disciples about his, what we would say, his ascension, or his, his crucifixion, death, resurrection, and ascension, as this past Thursday was Ascension Day. Jesus returning. And he's given them all kinds of details, and if you want to read that, you will understand why they were extremely confused. Because it kind of sounds like they're all talking in circles. Well, at the end of the conversation, I don't know what situa how they felt about what was going to happen, but right away, at the end of the conversation, Jesus turns, or I'm saying he's turning, and he starts to have a conversation with God the Father about these people. How God has given them to him, and he has taught them about eternal life. And so that conversation goes on. And then the conversation ends with Jesus saying this prayer. Holy Father, protect them. Protect them. Protect them. And then it goes on to say that they might be one as we are one. This past week, via virtual, I attended what's called the Festival of Homiletics. Sounds big and exciting, doesn't it? Homiletics is about preaching. 
And I got to listen to some amazing preachers from all different denominations, men, women, people of color, and oh my gosh, I just got so, oh, we're wound up and just got so excited about what they were talking about. And during the week, Tracy sent me a text message, how is it going? And I said, if I preach like this at New Salem, it will be my last Sunday. <laughs> The theme of the, hot, the Festival of Homiletics this year was hope. Hope about God's calling us, not just as preachers, but as the church, to bring hope into this world. And these preachers were not afraid to say where the hope probably needs to go. These preachers, I was right with them. They were talking about the church's role of bringing God's hope to the people who sit on the margins of our society, the margins of our world. We're talking about people whose skin is different color than ours. We're talking about the LGBTQIA plus people. We're talking about the people who are suffering from food disparity. We're talking about the people who are, do not have adequate health care. So they're not able to go to a doctor to get help when they are sick. We're talking about the people who need to make decisions between paying for medication or buying groceries, and that list goes on. And we all know who we're talking about. We know that. Unless you are the best ostrich in town and you've had your head buried, you cannot but know and be aware of this. And in this prayer, Jesus says that, that God might protect us, but then that ends with that they might be one as we are one. The church, and I mean the Christian church, is so divided on all of these subjects. The church, we the people of the church, have been listening to the many, 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 many lies that have been said about these people to where we've come to agree with them in many ways. And how then do we bring a sense of hope to those people? How is it that we can become one in mission and ministry not just here at New Salem, but throughout the whole Christian church. How do we do that? I don't have a final answer today. But I do know, and I believe that that is what we are called to do by Jesus Christ. And to love our Lord and our neighbor. And that we are called to be one in bringing hope to people who are desperate for a sense of hope and promise in our world. And I have a real passion for this. Again, I've been told that I'm always for the underdog. Well, that's a good group to be for. I have a great deal of passion about this. And that's why you hear it often out of my mouth. <clears throat> and I'm not, I don't say this again and again, that we, might be, that we might feel shame or guilt. No, we, we should not feel shame or guilt. What it is that we should be feeling and hearing is the call to be one in mission and ministry. Last week, in our gospel, Jesus promised to send the advocate, 
or the big Greek word is paraclete, which means one who stands beside. And we're going to hear about that again next Sunday as it is Pentecost Sunday. We have in our midst, in our lives, the advocate, the paraclete, the one that walks with us to show us how we might bring hope to all of those people who are living out there on the margins of our world. How we might bring hope. How we might speak against the lies that are being spoken. We have been prayed for by our Lord and Savior First and foremost, that we be protected in doing this. And then the prayer of our Lord Jesus to God our Father is that we might be one in doing this. Well, how do we do this? I, okay, I said I didn't have the answer, but I have some answers. The paraclete, the Holy Spirit, lives among us. And I believe that we, as God's people, need to be asking that our eyes be really open to what's in the world. That our ears be open that we might hear what is going on in the world in which we call home. That in our listening, in our seeing, and then it is in our coming together as God's people in a respectful, loving way and sharing what it is that we see, what it is that we hear. And in our coming together and sharing, we then turn and ask, how does the command to love the Lord and to love our neighbor fit into what we have seen and heard. And in our doing that, in our willingness to do that, we then, as God's people, can begin to bring hope. We need to bring hope to people who are sitting among us I so appreciate and am so very proud and honored that New Salem already at this point, we are beginning to educate ourselves on the disparities in this world to those people whose skin is a different color than ours. We are learning. We are opening our eyes and our ears that we might hear and see. And we're doing that up against the call to love God and our neighbor. And we are inviting, this group is inviting everyone to be part of that as opportunities arise. We are not talking about building placards and circling Paul and Babe for a day. We're not talking about that. We're talking about bringing hope in a loving way to the list of all of these people. Because that is the call. Because the gospel we hear today is Jesus saying, Lord, protect them as they do this. And Lord, Make them one as we are one. I've also been reminded that I'm Pollyanna in the world. I tend to be more of an optimist than a pessimist, and that gets me in trouble too. But I believe that we can do that. It's not an impossible Thing 
to do. Now, this is probably not a traditional Lutheran sermon. I don't know if I've ever preached a traditional Lutheran sermon. I don't know what they are. It's supposed to be a story in three points. I never have a story. Four points. <laughs> well, you know, and you would say, okay, first, But what I hear in God's word, what I hear other leaders in the church, meaning the Christian church, are saying is that it's time for all of us, all of us, to wake up. It's time for all of us in our own little world that we live to see where hope can be brought. It's time for us to see it. And it's not about us saying, well, we'll let the other people do it. No, if it's going to happen, every one of us sitting here has to be part of it. It's not, oh, we'll let the council do that. Oh, we'll let the young people do that. No. If we want it to happen, every last one of us has to be willing to be part of it. And Jesus says, protect them, Lord. Protect them, Father, while they're doing it, and that they may be one in mission and in ministry. Okay, here's your assignment for the week. And for our guests, I give an assignment every week. Uh, we never have to turn in your assignment, so that's a good one. First, I think this is a three-parter this week. The first part of your assignment is to remind yourself of that prayer. Just the first part. Father, protect them. <coughs> Father, protect me. Father, protect me. So that's the first part. The second part, and you maybe have already completed this part, is start looking and start listening. Start looking and start listening and be aware of the long list of the people in our culture who sit on the margins because we have put them there. Okay. And part three. Oh, I was going to hand this out. Forgot, sorry. Part three. Part three is, hear, this, hear the last part of that prayer. Lord, may they be one as we are one. And how of what you have heard in the protect and what you have heard and seen do, do you bring back that we might share that we might be one in bringing hope to a world that so desperately seeks it. Amen. We continue with our hymn of the day.
you to stand as you're able as we continue with the prayers of the people. God of harmony, as you drew your son to your side, you draw us to you and ask that you unite us with the planet and one another. Weave your church together in a web of mutual love and hope for the sake of the world. Show us how to be your hope and light in a world filled with great darkness. Lord, in your mercy, Hear as your spirit hovered over the waters of creation, so your spirit hovers over all that you have made. Send the sun and the rain upon the land that the crops may grow, there may be green pastures, and bless the farmers in their efforts to feed a hungry world. Lord, in your mercy, you empower your people with the fire of your spirit. Challenge us to speak truth to the lies being spread. Challenge all activists and organizers, teachers and politicians, and all in leadership to speak a message of peace, justice, hope, and truth. Lord, in your mercy, you care for all your people, all your children. Show your steadfast love to those suffering isolation, especially exiles and refugees or prisoners. Break the chains that held fast by systematic oppression of any kind. And comfort all who are afraid or suffering from illness. I invite you to, to cup your hands as a symbol of God's hand holding us all in the world as we name these our brothers and sisters that we gently place in God's care. For Luke and Ellen, Kelly, Rich, Kenneth, Megan, Gabe, Jan, Ethan, Monica, Fritzy, Tom, Harvey, Carolyn, Eddie, Linda, Emmy, Deb, Alexa, Lacey, Eric, Phyllis, Tiana, Azzy, Emma, Kendall, Laura, Stu, Sam, Sally, and those we name in our hearts. Breathe peace and comfort into the hearts of the Wickstrom family and the family of Randy Rumpel in their time of grief. Lord, in your mercy, we give you thanks that humankind serves as your body in the world, stewarding your abundant gifts. Guide this congregation and its leaders as we seek to do your will. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly Father, hear the prayers that we offer to you now, both spoken and silently. We gently, O oh Lord, place into your loving hands the prayers that are gathered in this jar, that by faith you will work, by faith you will answer, by faith you will love and care and support. Lord, in your mercy, for into your hands, O gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you all. Let's wave to our, our, those who are joining us online. Let's greet them 
And then let us greet one another with a sign of peace. Continue now with our ties and our offerings. I invite you to stand as you're able as we continue with our offering prayer. And together we pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings as you have raised us to life in Christ. Give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. This time I invite those who are joining us online to lift your elements of for communion as well. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in the remembrance of me. And together we pray, Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done 
on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the meal of Christ for the people of Christ. You are invited. You may be seated. I love you. Street. 
invite you to stand at your table for a communion blessing. <clears throat> and now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And together we pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. I invite you then to open your hearts to that you might receive God's blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our sending Him.
Oh.